For people living in the outback, where the nearest shop or hospital can be hundreds of kilometres away, electric vehicles have long felt like a pipe dream. But there are a small number of EVs in the heart of Australia. Video journalist Stephen Schubert in Alice Springs takes a look. It takes a long time to drive anywhere in the Australian outback. This part of Australia has long been the domain of diesel-powered utes and petrol four-wheel drives. But as the electric vehicle revolution takes hold around the world, it's slowly making its way to the heart of the country. In the first week of owning this car, we went from Brisbane straight down the east coast right to the uh, most southern tip of Victoria and then came up through South Australia. So we did about 8,000 kilometres in the first week. Hunter Murray is the vice president of the Australian Electric Vehicle Association. His electronic shop sells solar panels and batteries made by Tesla and other companies. The self-described tech geek has installed the fastest EV charger in the Northern Territory on the side of his shop in Alice Springs. It's all powered by a solar array on his roof, backed up by batteries. Here it takes around two hours to charge for a 400 kilometre range. Hunter Murray uses his electric vehicle as part of his business, servicing remote electronic setups like mobile phone towers, often travelling hundreds of kilometres a day. But once he's out of town, the only place to charge is at remote locations like this, an hour's drive south of Alice Springs. We've proven that we can drive EVs around Australia and long distance, that's not a problem. It's just the time to make it to do that. We might need roughly double the time as, as normal because of the lack of charging. Once we get that charging infrastructure up, get it fast, um, there's no excuse. Yeah, we're just getting back to town today and we thought we'd uh, drop in and get a bit of a charge out of you. Hey, good Peter start. Murphy, who's better known just as Spud, owns this roadhouse. Right, how's the jiggy going? Oh, good. Not a problem, mate. After do some do encouragement from Hunter, he put in an EV charging station a few years ago. But it's slow. To charge 400 kilometres of driving range could take five hours. Why did you want to put one in? Because I think it's a way of the future. Down into the generator shed here, we're going to check uh, one motor before we start it. Like most remote service stations, Stewart's Well is a long way from any electricity grid and has to create its own power using diesel generators. We've got power. There's plenty of sunshine and he says he'd like to install solar panels and batteries. The advantage is moving with the future and cutting the diesel costs. Cutting, cutting down on diesel costs alone would be phenomenal. How much do you spend on diesel? Oh, hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. There's another bonus too. You've got the atmosphere. You haven't got diesel smoke going into the air. Fast chargers like those found in big cities can charge a car to travel 400 kilometres in just 20 minutes, depending on the make. But installing one could cost upwards of $150,000 and a new solar and battery system to power it could be half a million dollars. All right, All right bud. Catch you after. Take care. The more vehicles we have, though, the more warranty there's going to be for that. In Alice Springs, one big organisation is starting to transition its fleet to electric vehicles. The Central Land Council supports Indigenous people in the southern half of the Northern Territory. Its fleet of 120 vehicles covers an area larger than France. Only one car is electric. But we're also planning to have another two electric vehicles in the fleet within the next six months. The Land Council's EV fleet will be powered by a huge solar array on the roof of their headquarters. 
Francine McCarthy says although the electric vehicles cost more upfront than a comparable new petrol vehicle, that should be offset by charging the car for free. The infrastructure, the charging infrastructure, if that's placed in uh, locations that are outside of um, Alice Springs, um, then the land council will be able to use these electric vehicles um, to go f further afield, say up to Tennant Creek or down to um, Eldunda and Uluru. Last year, the federal government granted $25 million to build fast charging infrastructure in regional Australia. But the funding is mostly going to the coastal fringe of the country. There's nothing for the outback. Energy Minister Angus Taylor wasn't available for an interview, but in a statement said the government is addressing charging black spots with targeted co-investment with industry through the $250 million Future Fuels Fund and has committed to building 403 fast charging stations, including in the Northern Territory. For now, those pushing EVs for the outback will keep going, maybe just a little more slowly than they'd like. You know, we've got this huge nuclear generator that comes up in the morning and goes down at night, and uh, all we need to do is catch it, you know, um, and it's free, <laughs> it's a pretty good deal. You can read a full statement from the Energy Minister Angus Taylor on our website. That's the program for tonight. Thanks for your company. Good night.